Majority Report with Sam Cedar. The destiny of America is always safer in the hands of the people than in the conference rooms of any elite. Sam Cedar. They are unanimous in their hate for me, and I welcome their hatred. We must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The Majority Report with Sam Cedar. <laughs> And I get the feeling you've been cheated. It is Tuesday, May 17th, 2022. My name is Sam Cedar. This is the five-time award-winning Majority Report. We are broadcasting live steps from the industrially ravaged Gowanus Canal in the heartland of America, downtown Brooklyn, USA. On the program today, Tucker Carlson, Elise Stefanik, unbowed in the wake of replacement theory mass killing. Meanwhile, voters head to the polls. Primaries day, uh, primary day today, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, North Carolina, Oregon, Idaho. That's five or six. I feel like there's one more. Go vote! It's just five. I had them all. Finland formally seeks to join NATO. Sweden signs a request to join NATO. Didn't work out too well for Putin in that regard. $40 billion package advances in the Senate now that Rand Paul has got his name in the newspaper. Still, COVID relief languishes. Ukrainian military surrenders Maripol. Bernie Sanders calls for banning super PAC money in primaries, essentially having the Democratic Party officially shun them to the extent that they can. That will have a uh, great bearing on our conversations about the primaries that are happening today. FDA approves booster shot for Pfizer for five to 11 year olds. While COVID deaths hit 1 million people. FDA and Abbott reach a deal to open the shuttered baby formula, uh, formula plant. That had to be shut down because Abbott was allowing a lot of bacteria in there they will also ease uh, baby formula import rules Biden redeploys several hundred troops to Somalia and the new New York congressional maps are a mess and some good news if you're a CEO, your pay package has risen to record levels. So, some good news. Yay! All this and more on today's program. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Uh, it is uh, Tuesday, not Monday. Yesterday was Monday. We were off because we were all coming back from Boston and uh, here uh uh, with me uh, today, as always, Emma Vigeland. It's Newsday Tuesday. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. It's, yeah. You were right on top of that. Oh, yeah. I know. I'm a little bit more partial to that than hump day these days. Well, there you go. My new favorite, uh, my new favorite child. Well, you don't have to decide between them because uh, they, they inevitably show up uh, every week. Both well, Newsday Tuesday and... Election Day Tuesday as well. Yes. We should say, programming note. We're going to be doing live coverage tonight of the primary results starting at about 6.50 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be talking to Dave Weigel. Uh, are we going to talk to Bobby Big Will? Okay, we'll see about that. And um, uh, we will be doing some uh, coverage of the primaries tonight, so join us then. Same, same, same way that you join us today. Um, we're back from Boston. Just a couple of words about the show. It was amazing. It was great. 
It really actually was a tremendous amount of fun. We'll talk more about it in the fun half. But uh, I want to thank everybody who came out. And our, I guess I can announce who our special guest was. It was Al Franken. It was. He was excellent. Al Franken was, was great. He happened to have been in town. Somebody guessed it uh, when I am her. And somebody on uh, t- Twitter had guessed it a while back. I didn't want to say anything because you almost ruined it. And um, you almost ruined everything. You almost ruined everything. <laughs> and we owe you twenty bucks. <laughs> uh, well, I don't owe them twenty bucks. I didn't uh, take the betting challenge, but they, I think they wanted to be make they sure won. that they <laughs> the mark. But you know, in the future, if we ever say special guest and you think you've guessed it, tweet at us. Don't don't tweet at the special guest because that makes the special guest nervous. They're like, oh, wait a second, I thought I was a special guest. You know, because he was doing a show the night before, right? And you don't want. To cut into your ticket sales, you know, if you're going to do the show the next day. Yeah. Now, to be honest with you, I went to his show. It was great. He just, he did stand up. It was great. Um, and the audience, though, was much older than ours. Much older. Uh, our audience was young and sprightly. Yeah. I mean, I, this sounds counterintuitive because I'm so old, but our audience... I mean, I would say something like 75% of our audience is younger, is, is significantly younger than me. At I least would say so. 75%. Yeah. I'm just going off the, uh, the YouTube uh, analytics. The audio audience may be a little bit different, and, uh, but, um, and we had a great time. Uh, Ted Leo and uh. the band Combat Zone. Uh, if you know anything about Boston, Boston you, know, you get that, but um, they were fantastic. Live versions of La Poupée pilot light and um i mean pressure for, drop for people that don't, don't know we walked out to the band like doing the song live yes. doing the intro song which was a really amazing um because you can i mean they they say you know audio tracks you miss so many of the gradations of like what live music actually sounds like and all the different layers and it was just it's cool it's and like, i haven't been hearing a lot of live music this past couple yeah years. Well, that's true too yeah i think that's actually the first time i've heard live music in two years wow Wait, now that I think about it, yes. Right. Maybe that was part. I mean, I was so excited. That's why I was so excited. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, Natalie Scher was great. She had a great piece recently in, in the New Republic about the electoral implications of, uh, of where we're at at this point with Roe v. Wade. Um, uh, not necessarily the most cheerful of pieces. And uh, we had two uh, activists from Extinction Rebellion up in Boston, uh, which uh, was really inspiring for folks. And um, and we also I did a debate with a right winger who I think some people in this audience are familiar with. Um, Hope he's okay. Well, that was one of the unfortunate things that happened at the end. Maybe we wouldn't even shouldn't talk about that. Yeah, I think we our- might release the video of that. But um, we are editing the show as it is now. We had a, um, a nice shooter, and we we're editing the show. And we will, um, we're going to release that, I think, for members soon. When we do that, I will let you know. So you may want to become a member at jointhemajorityreport.com right now to check all of that out. Ultimately, we'll probably cut it up uh, and, and put out some of the, the videos. But um, to get the full f- feel of the show, uh, you're going to want to become a member, jointhemajorityreport.com. All right, let's go right into this, this horrible tragedy up in Buffalo. Um, I mean, for, we've we've had mass killings now, it, and and they have been. It, you know, COVID seems to have at least um, slowed the roll a little bit, but I think things are probably going to start ramping up again, and maybe even be worse. Um, and this was not just a uh, a random mass killing. This was um, a, a hate crime this was specifically where you had a, a white 18 year old who know the exact yes. age uh, he's been identified he's in custody uh targeting black people and because they're black and because this guy felt like he got this crazy idea one wonders where he would have got it that there is a plan afoot to replace all the white people in this country. Here is 
the former uh, Buffalo Fire Commissioner, uh, Garnell Whitfield Jr. But we're not just hurting, we're angry, yeah. we're mad. This shouldn't have happened. No, it shouldn't. We do our best to be good citizens, to be good people. We believe in God. We trust him. Right. We treat people with decency. Yes. And we love even our enemies. Yes. And you expect us to keep doing this over and over and over again. Over. over again. Forgive and forget. While the people we elect and trust in offices around this country do their best not to protect us, yes. not to consider us equal. Not to love us back. What are we supposed to do? Uh, I, I don't. I don't have any answers as to to that question, rhetorical or not rhetorical question. And his mother Ruth was killed in the shooting. Uh, Commissioner Whitfield. That yeah, there there were a lot of you know Twitter threads on the victims and. <clears throat> You know how involved they were in their community and all of the amazing uh things that th th they did in, uh, in the community um yeah so the, he was explicitly committed to the great replacement theory concept in his over i think 180 page manifesto um cited it regularly and Talia, it opens with talking about how like white people need to get their birth rates up. So classic, classic, stuff. classic, right? Um, the the Talia Levin has this excellent piece in Rolling Stone that I'd encourage everybody to read, uh, just like about the Great Replacement Theory. And you might be familiar with it, just you know, um, listening to the show. But the shooter in Pittsburgh was radicalized by Great Replacement Theory. The shooter in El Paso was radicalized by it and it's basically the concept that the globalists which is what mainstream republicans will call it or the elites which is what you know someone like tucker carlson will call it it's a stand-in for jewish people are manufacturing this replacement of white people in the country and it this demographic shift that you're experiencing it's not an organic or natural shift or just a change that's happening because changes happen. It's a sinister plot that's being put together by the elites, which basically just means the Jews. He, um, according to uh, the Buffalo News, he stated in his manifesto that his goals are to kill as many blacks as possible, avoid dying and spread ideals. He explains that he targeted the 14208 zip code because it's the area code closest to his home in Conklin, near Binghamton, that has the highest proportion of black residents. He wanted to stay in New York because with its strict gun laws, he was less likely to encounter someone who could use a high-powered weapon to slow or stop his attack. Um, he also was wearing body armor and tactical gear. Brought himself a medical kit. Um, he wanted to find a busy store in, in a targeted neighborhood. So he chose 4 p.m. on a Friday. Uh, but uh, in his manifesto, but he ended up going at 2.30 on a Saturday. So it's unclear if he got sort of thwarted the first time. Um, he, uh, I mean, there it is. And, I, you know, look. In my mind, everybody who does something like this is mentally and emotionally unstable. Mm -hmm. But it really is about, like, the level of ideology that is, um, that is articulated and the specificity of that ideology. And, and also, I mean, let's be clear— um, there's also a specific type of person, ideo ideologically speaking, in this country who is uh, very comfortable gearing up with body armor and having um, such like weapons fetishization. 
And, you know, this is not like um, this is not there is a culture around all of this. Yes. The buffiness. I'm not even talking about the ideology. I'm okay. talking about like the, the the weaponry and the buffiness, because this is not a situation where like some guy gets mad and and, and, and grabs a knife and goes. This is a a mass assault with an attempt to create. I mean, he this is. This is definitionally terrorism. There's a lot of times where I think like the word terrorism gets used inappropriately. It ends up being a it ends up being a um, uh, a mechanism in which to increase surveillance that um, more often than not ends up being used on um, people with uh, marginalized people in this country. So I'm 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 hesitant to use that word. But when you specifically say I am going out there to kill a bunch of people specifically to increase awareness of these ideas. <laughs> I mean and that the, that is what terrorism is. And the ideas in and of themselves are like you you, you talked about just the proclivity for for that specific kind of like militaristic violence, but the ideal ideology in and of itself is inherently violent, um, and it's. I mean, the, there's just more violent. Uh, it's inherent to right to being on the right. I mean, like far right. There's more. It's a more violent ideology than being on the left. And like you, you're reading these posts. Um, the substack from Glenn today that I read this morning, unfortunately, and Who's giving Glenn. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess who cares? Right. But I mean, honestly, I mean, if you want to bring it up, bring it up, but don't say it just like Glenn. I mean, okay. it's, it's like you want to sh uh, go through someone's argument, do that. But like, I'm not. We're not on a first name basis, you know. Like, okay, I think we've uh, got to be specific. Greenwald. All right, and and but but the right is trying to do this. They're always bringing up the Scalise shooting and other examples, and they are trying to publicly wash their hands of the what's inherent to right-wing ideology and by flattening it by pretending that there's a false that uh, creating a false equivalence with somebody else who might have been radicalized in a different way on the left and it's trying to shield themselves from scrutiny for someone like tucker carlson who has been dancing around if not explicitly talking about great replacement theory for months and months there is no, no documented uh, event in, the, in history that I'm aware of, of someone trying to kill people to promote Medicare for all, to promote um, paid sick leave, to promote, um, I don't know, to promote choice, frankly. I mean, the closest that we have to anything like that, I think, is, you know, an argument like um, uh, that that author that we had on on uh, how to blow up a pipeline where there is violence to the and some people argue that violence against property is not violence at all. Even if I stipulate that violence against property is violence, which I'm not so convinced of, but even if I stipulate that. You do not have situations where people are attacked as a way of promoting leftist ideology or even, uh, you know, uh, environmental or uh, which isn't necessarily leftist, but is associated, I think, with people center left, at least in this country. It just did not the, the you can't make that analogy. Are there supporters of people on the left who have attacked other people? Of course. Are there um, fringe members of separatists? Um, but I don't know that you could call that left ideology, uh, frankly. And certainly we don't have mass media voices who are out there encouraging, let's say, you know, separatism like that brought about the uh, attack that we saw in Brooklyn on the train. Like where in where in 
any published or uh, uh, mass media, can you find an individual who is promoting violent separatism in this country? You can't. You can't name that person because the name is not the, uh, you know, that person is not the most popular cable TV show host in the country. That person is not an elected official of the Democratic Party. That person is not a millionaire substacker. I have no doubt that you could find somebody on YouTube promoting violence in what you could broadly call just from a cultural standpoint, you know, left. But there's just simply nothing even remotely close. No militias. <laughs> no militias. It just doesn't exist. It also bears out in the data. Right-wing violence and extremists, plots and attacks, it's exponentially larger well, than left-wing ones. It's but, just, I mean, we don't even need to, like, you know, we can just look at the, the, the raw numbers. Let's uh, look at... Um, Here's Tucker Carlson. Here is the most popular, most high, well-paid, I don't know, um, cable TV show, show host in the country. Dinner guest with the former presidents. On a, on a regular basis. And probably, yeah, we have former presidents. Um, and here he is. Here's just like a little assembly. This is from... Um, uh, Mehdi Hassan's show. Now, I know that the left and all the little gatekeepers on Twitter become literally hysterical if you use the term replacement, if you suggest that the Democratic Party is trying to replace the current electorate, the voters now casting ballots, with new people, more obedient voters from the third world. But they become hysterical because that's, that's what's happening. Pause actually. it for one second. Pause it one second. First off, he knows that that word replacement specifically means something specific. It means something specific. Whether you are a member of a church or whether you are a member of an organization, you know there are words <clears throat> that are used amongst people that mean something slightly different than what it means when we use it in the vernacular. And when he says replacement, he knows, knows, absolutely knows that he is speaking to white supremacists there. <clears throat> On top of which, what he's saying is also a lie, just even from a vernacular standpoint. Yeah. That's, that's what's happening, actually. Let's just say it. That's <laughs> true. Let's say that again for emphasis, because it is the secret to the entire immigration debate. Demographic change is the key to the Democratic Party's political ambitions. In other words, you're being replaced and there's nothing you can do about it. So shut up. <laughs> I mean, they're trying to change the population of the United States. And they hate it when you say that because it's true. Our country's being invaded by the rest of the world. I mean, the state unequivocally, the country's being stolen from American citizens as we watch. In political terms, this policy is called the Great Replacement, the replacement of legacy Americans with more obedient people from faraway countries. Legacy Americans? That, that, that is not a concept that we have ever, ever talked about in this country. We've talked about Native Americans in terms of indigenous people, but we've never talked about legacy Americans. These are all, these are all white supremacist terminology. When you say the country's being stolen from you, there is no way to justify that. No way, even from the perspective of a white supremacist, because the country's not being stolen. You, you may be on the wrong end of a political argument as to how many immigrants we allow in the country, but there's no stealing. But they say this stealing is, because they're trying to make it a, a larger malevolent force that's orchestrating this. Well, listen, if you're being robbed and you're being invaded, how do you respond if you're even a rational person? We're being invaded. We're being robbed. Castle doctrine. I mean, we know what this means.
I was just really quickly reminded of this quote from this former white nationalist who said, it's really, really alarming that my family watches Tucker Carlson's show once and then watches it on the replay because they feel that he is making the white nationalist talking points better than they have. And they're trying to get some tips on how to advance it. Um, this is a quote from a former white nationalist from uh, two years ago in 2019. Oh, but yeah. that's exactly what it is. So when he says replace, 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 repra- replace, he knows exactly what he's evoking. I mean, he literally had to fire a fascist from his <laughs> writing staff. Right. Because that guy was posting on those boards yeah. and saying, hey, uh, guys, I got, I got this in tonight. This is getting on. So proud of myself. I'm so proud of myself. Here is... Um, uh, clip number three. This is uh, Tucker Carlson addressing the Buffalo shooting, um, which, you know, look, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. I mean, he is got one mission, and that is how to increase his ratings. And the way that Fox, the way that Fox actually became successful after like a decade of being run at an operating deficit. People forget that Murdoch poured a tremendous amount of money into Fox News for over an extended period of time. But the the commercial pitch to Fox was, we are an alternative to the liberal media. This was going on in the late 90s even. In, in, but it took a while for the conservative movement to create that sort of like sense of aggrievement around the media. And it was partly driven by talk radio. They wanted to, to, uh, to claim that they were, you know, the only outlet for this because you're being denied a hearing on the, you know, CBS or NBC there was no there was no MSNBC at this time, or to the extent that it was, it was Scarborough and Tucker Carlson, to be clear, and Pat Buchanan. There was never any liberal media even remotely close to Fox. And Tucker's doing the same thing. He is going to an underserved community, one that doesn't have an outlet on mass media that is white supremacists yeah, clans folk <laughs> racists been waiting to be spoken for soon to be white supremacists racist vaguely racist just in any way aggrieved and so he knows exactly what he's doing so it's interesting to see how he tries to um w- you know wiggle out of this and of course it is to blame it on the democrats what sort of person uses mass murder as an excuse to give a campaign speech or seize more political power? We'll find out tomorrow. Pause it. Pause it. To the- well, I'm old enough to remember 9-11. <laughs> and I'm old enough to remember that's exactly what George Bush did, and that's what the Republican Party did. And I'm old enough to remember that he, Tucker Carlson, was cheering this on. On CNN. The first argument to any sort of mass killing is like, why are you recognizing that it happened? Right, exactly. Why are you even why are you even questioning the underpinnings of this existing? Why aren't you just, I don't know, treating the dead? Writing it or writing it off as a lone wolf and moving on. Joe Biden travels to the scene of this atrocity in Buffalo to speak to the country. We haven't seen an advanced copy of his remarks, but we can guess what we will hear. Biden's approval rating appears to be the lowest ever recorded for a president this century, lower than Donald Trump's. That is a disaster for his party. The Democratic Party will suffer for this in this fall's elections. Biden still has time to change course and fix it. He could try to improve the lives of voters who are dissatisfied with him. That is entirely possible. That's what politicians typically do when they're down. They listen to the people who might reelect them. But Biden doesn't plan to do that. And we know for a fact because Politico just reported it. Instead, Biden has decided to attack people who disapprove. According to Politico, quote, Biden has taken to telling his aides that he no longer recognizes the GOP, which he now views as an existential threat to the nation's democracy. End quote. People who disagree with Joe Biden, according to Joe Biden, are now a, quote, existential threat to the nation, like Al-Qaeda or climate change. 
a threat that by definition is so profound we must declare war upon it if we're to survive. Now, keep in mind this threat that Biden is referring to is you. He's talking about his fellow Americans. No president has ever spoken like this, ever. Joe Biden does it regularly, and he's certain to do it again tomorrow. But most painful and destructive at all, Biden is likely to use racial wounds in order to make his point. There is no behavior worse than this. All race Pause politics it. Just is be, bad. Be, we, a couple of things that we just should note here. First of all, Donald Trump said, I mean, so many things publicly about Democrats. And frankly, I don't care. I mean, why do Jews, why would any Jews vote for Democrats now? Yeah. I just, you know, I don't know. It comes, I mean, there's so much. Oh, and the un unseemliness of using tragedies. Trump had an entire, like, uh, government agency about, like, Im crimes committed by right. immigrants. Yeah. Yes. It's absurd. But also, there's no worse thing that one can do than to um, exploit these. Ra well, wh what about the actual racist shooting that took place? That's not worse. That seems like that would be worse. There's no worse thing you can do than address that type of racial hatred geared towards people. And the idea that he's talking about you, well, are those people the insurrectionists? Are those people, we know all the audio of what the, the Republicans said the day after January 6th. We know what the leadership was saying. We, ha we literally have audio of it. And they all have reversed themselves. We know that in states like Michigan, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania, I mean, the Re Republican Party is trying to get election officials in who specifically have already committed to overturning election results. I mean, this is like, this is low-hanging fruit. And the fact that it's taken Joe Biden this long is a little bit disturbing, frankly. Well, I'd love to see if it, like, manifests itself in his actions. Well, it, yeah, it, it might, but it's a little bit late. Like, you should have recognized this maybe a year ago. Before inviting Republicans in to negotiate on Build Back Better, for example, infrastructure. Yeah, before saying that, dude, I have partners. I mean, even when he said, like, six months after Trump is gone, they're going to revert back to normal. It's like, well, wait a second. Trump wasn't president when Mitch McConnell was saying, you're not going to, you're, you're president, your administration's not going to get even a hearing about the Supreme Court justice. I mean, so, but all right, continue. Biden is likely to use racial wounds in order to make his point. There is no behavior worse than this. Pause it. Just again, just contemplate this. The actual creation of the racial wounds in the form of shooting 10 people dead because they're black. Not worse behavior than coming and addressing that that has just happened. Like you gotta, like every word that comes out of this incredibly inhuman, pathological, sociopathic guy, Tucker, you've got to listen to carefully yeah. because these are being absorbed by millions of people. Recognition 17, of 17, 18 year old kids. Yeah. yeah. Well, this kid. Right. This kid. And uh, recognition of the act is worse than the act itself. And I mean, just to say, like, this stuff is scripted out by writers. And the previous person, uh, Blake Neff, responded to a thread uh, with the subject line Would you let a jet black Congo bl uh, N word do LASIK eye surgery on you for 50% off? So that's the type of person that Tucker Carlson has writing this stuff. Continue. Or to make his point. There is no behavior worse than this. All race politics is bad, no matter what flavor those politics happen to be. No race politics is better than any other. All <laughs> of it is poison. Pause it. Race Pause politics. It. No race. Shooting 10 people because they're black. That race politics. Or disenfranchising black people, keeping them from voting. Or setting up laws that necessarily disadvantage brown people or um, or pulling uh, kids from their parents because they're brown. Those politics are no different, no different than going 
to Buffalo and just assuming that Tucker's, you know, straw speech is correct, going out and saying, we need to, I don't know what, um, have equality or protection or get rid of white supremacy. Yeah. I mean, those are the same things. Even talking to. about racism is the same as the racism. There's good. Diagnosing the racism is the same as the racist act. There's I mean, good people on both sides and bad people on both sides. Than any other. All of it is poison. Race politics subsumes the individual into the group. It erases people. It dehumanizes them. Race politics elevates appearance over initiative and decency and all the other God-given qualities that makes every person of every color mm. unique Pause. yet morally. God Republicans would never uh, put someone's appearance over their humanity. I did, you know, Trump never made fun of anyone's physical appearance. We're just putting that aside, but keep going. Equal to every other person. And above all, race politics always makes us hate each other and always in a very predictable way. So let's say you were to make identity politics mandatory in your country, as they have. How could you be surprised when that leads, as it inevitably will, to white identity politics? Well, you could not be surprised. I mean, I, sorry, but like white identity politics is the original identity politics. Exactly. Of this that, country has white identity politics. When you decide... That slavery, you're going to impose slavery. You're going to own people. But it's not going to be, uh, we're, we can't own people. We're owning black people. That's when white identity politics starts to be created in this country. And it becomes so dominant and the norm that no one acknowledges that it's white identity politics. It's just normal politics. That race is not introduced. And this is the entire argument of the Republican Party. The conservative movement. Race is only introduced when someone non-white starts to say, hey, wait a second. We've been denied everything that white people have. Now, that's not to say that every white person has gotten these things. And in fact, more often than not, when white people have been denied them, it has been... Like you, you're caught in the same net, uh, you know, some uh, uh, dolphins, they get caught in the net yeah. with the, when they're going to uh, tuna fishing. I mean, we just look back to uh, Reconstruction, look back to the assault on the ability of people to vote. Um, they, they have no problem canceling out poor white people's votes. But it is really, I mean, the name of the game was to get rid of black people's votes at that time. And, and like, this is what he's uh, exemplifying here is what I try. I think I talked about it last week. The look what you made me do dynamic on the right. The fact that you're calling attention to racism, that's race politics. And that's fundamentally the same as the white supremacist ideology that I wink and a nod and support on my program. And so if you got, if you're going to keep pushing for progress, you're going to make people resentful and they're going to push back on you. And that's going to be righteous. That's what he's saying. It's abuser logic and it's inherent to right wing uh, reactionary it, ideology. It's it naturalizes white male suffrage and the European only immigration that we had for so long as like what we should be doing. And any sort of move away from that, which was a white supremacist policy, is you know identity politics that is you know uh trying to i mean that that that's what they miss is they miss european only immigration codes and you know white male suffrage and and the, you can go across the board with this type of dynamic i mean what's the what is the what is the name of the movement that wanted to that wants to empower men in our society so that they can earn and uh as much as they can and they um, they have a full complement of rights where they, um, you know, they could own their own credit cards, where every um, they 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 would keep their own last name. They would make decisions about, uh, you know, whether they're going to use birth control or not, um, whether they can have any family planning. What is the name uh, of that? The the opposite of feminism or the, the, the feminism for men is called society in our society. 
That's what it's called. Because that's the way this society was launched. Get grant it, it, those rights existed on day one. And so they get to define anything else as special interests or as identity politics when it is people who are not their identity calling attention to the fact that because of my identity, I have been excluded from these things in society. This is just the pure reactionary mind. And, and, and every time they go back and try and maintain that hierarchy, they're doing it in a new hip way and we're going, you know. How could you be surprised when that leads, as it inevitably will, to white identity politics? Well, you could not be surprised. You did it and it was always going to happen. And then what happens next? Nothing good. Race politics is a sin. Race politics always leads to violence and death. They learned that lesson in Rwanda in 1994. Identity politics ended in genocide in Rwanda that killed 800,000 people. He brings up this example all the time. In response to those horrors, the Rwandans did something that we might learn from. They moved in the opposite direction from the one that Joe Biden is currently taking in the United States. Quote, ethnicity has already been stripped out of school books and rubbed off government identity cards, reported the New York Times. Government documents no longer mention Hutu or Tutsi, and the country's newspapers and radio stations steer clear of the labels as well. Most oh, pa, 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 pa. Tightly controlled by the government, he took that out. He took that out when he read it. Did you notice that? Go back. He took that out. Yeah. Yeah. Ethnicity has already been stripped out of school books and rubbed off government identity cards, reported the New York Times. Government documents no longer mention Hutu or Tutsi, and the country's newspapers and radio stations steer clear of the labels as well. <laughs> Most dramatic is how Rwanda's 8 million people now shun the identifications, the racial identifications, that seemed to loom so large 10 years ago as Hutu extremists began their mass killings, end quote. Positive, that actually is more of a, I would say, religious than racial identifications. A colorblind meritocracy, he writes. Tribal configurations more than uh, racial ones. And we should say that, like, you know, this idea that, we, that Joe Biden's invented white identity politics and that can only lead to violence. You would have to be unaware of slavery, all of the violence committed during slavery. You'd have to be unaware of the Civil War. You'd have to be unaware of the bloody coups that took place uh, under Reconstruction, the lynchings that followed or continued throughout, I should probably say, but maintained lynches into the early 20s. Uh, then you'd have to be unaware of all of the uh, killings, uh, just the one that took place in Georgia. Most prominently, you'd have to be unaware of all the police killings of unarmed black people. Um, you'd have to be a, unaware of almost every single year, month of American history that has ever taken place to say, whoa, this white identity politics is yeah. here because people are being so aware of, of race. You'd have to be unaware of uh, Jesse Helms, for instance. Like, mm. a guy I like mean, you have to be unaware. Like, literally, there's an example every every day. But 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 to be fair, like in terms of a national example, you'd have to be aware every 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 uh, you know month, let's say. Before you put that up, can we just? Oh, okay, we'll put. Yeah, I just want. It's fine. The 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 Chiron is called a a colorblind meritocracy. There, right? Like that they. This is the the way that all reactionary right wingers sell their ideology to society. Is they pretend like that they are the ones that are the apolitical, colorblind, rational ones, as opposed to the radical people calling for the rights of those other folks. And he literally said in that segment, you did it. You did it. Did you hear that? Did yeah. you catch him say that? He's blaming anybody that's calling for equality and for improvement of people's rights. He's blaming them. And it's victim blaming, but to the max. You can put that up now.
I, I don't have a big enough one, but in his yearbook, he said he's a member of the Jesse Helm Society. So I ah. think Tucker's aware of ident white identity, identity politics. Emphasized race in Rwanda, intentionally and systematically. Rwandan citizens are citizens first, members of racial or tribal groups second or not at all. Result, there have been no more genocides in Rwanda. And that could easily be the path forward for this country, too. There was only one answer to rising racial tension, and that's to de-escalate and do what we have done and tried to do for hundreds of years, which is work toward colorblind meritocracy and treat people as human beings created by God rather than as faceless members of interest groups that might benefit some political party or, or other. We have a moral duty to do this because all people have equal moral value, no matter what they look like. All lives matter, period. That's not the determination of the U.S. government. That's the determination of God, and it's true. And most Americans already believe it. They would like to see a return to the American way of life. And the American way of life is meritocracy. Judge me by what I do, not by how I look. By the pause content it, pause of my... it. What, what day in this country's history was that an example of the American way of life? Where meritocracy, this motherfucker, he got every single thing he got from the first Swiss boarding school he went to to the next boarding school he went to in Newport, Rhode Island, to his girlfriend's dad who got him into Trinity, and his parents who gave the topped out and the top tier of money given to Trinity. To his connections via his dad, who was a Republican operative. This guy got it not based on merit. What day, but, but putting him aside, what day as a system in this country has American life been a meritocracy? What day? He was literally a few weeks ago calling for the LSAT scores of Katanji Brown Jackson um, and claiming that her nomination to the court was like, I don't know, somehow a violation of that meritocracy as he has the background that Sam, Sam describes. And, and, and also as the other um, uh, Supreme Court justices to compare to. But what day in this country's history? You tell me what day in this country's history there was a meritocracy where race or money of the individual or the family did not implicate the success of an individual in this country. What day? Give me one day. This mythical American life, return to American way of life. It helps great replacement because then it naturalizes our racial hierarchy. That's what it is. Well, you're right. Exactly. It looks like any sort of like a wage or, or a, a race or gender gap. And it says, well, we have a metocracy and uh, we did all that stuff for your civil rights way back, you know, in the olden days. So now it's up to you. And it's clearly a in inborn sort right. of, uh, limitation on you. So, yep. like, yeah, exactly. It's and Charles the other thing Martin. he does is when he mentioned this Rwanda example, uh, it, it's a little bit of a domestic genocide denial by by keep going there because I mean I know he likes it as like a, a recent historical thing but he acts like like you have to go to Africa to get some kind of genocide and, and maybe a genocide could happen here if we go down this wrong path of wokeness it's like bro, we're surrounded by genocide this country yep character not the color of my skin we have a monument on the mall to this and yet suddenly every voice suddenly. in power is leading us in the opposite direction. And what's the terminus of that journey? It's destruction. Everybody knows this. Only our leaders stand in the way of fixing a problem that is growing worse by the day. There you go. And what is the problem again? On the day after uh, 10 people have been shot because they're black, explicitly shot because they're black, what is the problem? Our leaders are talking about, uh, you know, addressing it just going to make it worse addressing it is going to make it worse yeah i can't i can't do the i wish michael was here because i can't do the mlk impression where it's like don't don't mention race stop talking about these guys you're just 
Goading them on. Talk about meritocracy. Let the white man feel more comfortable. Stop. This is your fault. Special interest. <laughs> you did this. You're all a special interest. Uh, we're blowing off that ad today. We'll do it uh, another day. It's not the day for that. Can't believe we went the full hour on that. I guess I can. I mean, Tucker Carlson's going to be front facing for this, and like, you know, the, the, did we expect him to take any responsibility? No. I mean, please. But 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 also, uh, let, let me just while we're here, it's one thing to say that the guy who has been associated with Republican politics his whole life, his father's a Republican operative, who dines with Republican presidents who advises sitting Republican presidents, who has the highest rated show on the um, on, on cable news, a conservative Republican network, almost, almost indistinguishable as a media outlet for the Republican Party. It's one thing to say there is no analog to any violence that takes place from so-called leftists where they have that type of institutional support. But he's, again, it's not like he's a Republican elected official. It's not like he's Steve Scalise, who is the number two Republican, who once walked into a room and said, I'm David Duke without the luggage or baggage. And it's also not like he's the number three House Republican, Elise Stefanik, who has um, promoted replacement theory as well. Well, don't be. We, we got to be fair to her, right? She must have an explanation for it. Maybe she didn't mean to explicitly promote replacement theory. Although Radical Democrats are planning their most aggressive move yet, a permanent election insurrection. What is a permanent election insurrection? Now, let's just be clear here. So that you can just see, I mean, because I know some of this is a little bit uh, 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 remedial. But an election insurrection is when the election is over and you're attempting to overturn the results of an election. It's not I like coercing the <laughs> it's not getting more voters to vote in a certain way. That's called an election. Preemptive insurrection. Their plan, grant amnesty to 11 million illegal immigrants. Also, you should know, the greatest, the greatest one-time amnesty that was ever granted in this country's history was done by Ronald Reagan. Until Donald Trump, the most popular Republican president amongst Republicans in the history of the country. Just to say, like, you know, the even the theory that granting amnesty would uh, necessarily be something that was contrary to the interests of Republican Party or Democratic Party over Republicans. Now, putting that aside, there is, sadly, in my estimation, no plans whatsoever to grant uh, 11 million people amnesty. So that's also a lie. But even if it wasn't, continue. Oh, I'm sorry. Grant well, amnesty to 11 million illegal immigrants will overthrow our current electorate. Now, what is it? What is it like? These words are not, they, they are misusing these words. There is no way when you talk about adding people adding immigrants into this country that you're overthrowing an electorate. You can't overthrow an electorate. That word does not make sense in that sentence sentence. It is a, it is a conscious attempt to mimic the construction of the idea of the re great replacement theory. That's what it is. That it is a conscious attempt to do that. Overthrow our current electorate. In other words, replace our current electorate 
and create a permanent liberal majority in Washington. She is saying this is the great replacement theory, and she is the number three Republican in the Republican Party in terms of elected leaders, at least in the House. And then we should also add, just four days ago, just to give you a sense of like what the, the, the sort of like where we're at with the Republican Party. And that quest for a strong, sensible Republican Party of yesteryear. Right. And she was the great white hope, too, for that, right, when she first came in. That was like her whole thing. Wasn't she anti-Trump? Oh, yeah. yeah. She, yeah. Was, she was like a moderate, like, problem-solver-ish person initially. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to be fair, that was almost four whole years ago. And with adults, anything could happen over the course of four years. My 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 set my nine year old son is similar to where he was uh, when he was five than when she was uh, four years ago. The White House, she tweets, House Dems and usual pedo grifters are so out of touch with the American people that rather than present any plan or urgency to address the nationwide baby formula crisis, they doubled down on sending pallets of formula to the southern border. Joe Biden has no plan. The White House, House Democrats, and usual pedo grifters. Now, they're out of touch with Americans. They don't present any plan. So we know that these pedo grifters are supposed to present a plan and have urgency to address the nationwide baby formula crisis. She is talking about Democratic, maybe lawmakers, maybe policy people. Who else would you expect to do that? Who is she talking to? Who is she talking to? And let's find out who she's talking about. We, we, we have an explanation from her... Um, for uh, who is it? What, what is the name? So of the this is an audio posted by Parker Malloy of a journalist calling one of uh, her staffers, and her staffer tries to give an explanation here. So she she tweeted again. She said the White House, House Dems, and usual pedo grifters. Now, you know, you sort of start you sort of start the conversation pretty bad when you say the White House, House Dems, and usual pedo grifters. Who are the usual pedo yep, so, grifters? So, so I, I don't mean to cut you off. I I, I wanted because we've got a few phone calls about this. Uh, first off, is this is her personal Twitter? Just have to note that. Um, and number two. Uh, pause it. Pedo pause it. Is not pause short it. What? Pedo. This is your personal Twitter. What the f? They're is meaning that it, it was not tweeted from like the representative uh, Stefanik account. Uh, it was just her like regular yeah. blog. She's Sam's mom, and she's also the congresswoman from New York Twenty One. Yeah. And oh, uh, the House GOP conference chair. Oh, and new ideas, new generation of leadership, real results, electing GOP women. I'm just like that's what's on her personal thing. This yeah. is not like. This is not like her sock puppet yeah. account. Like, she hey, has, it's Bill four five seven eight nine. She has half a million followers. That is because of her uh, elected office. Yeah. It's not because of Sam's mom. Okay. First off, is this is her personal Twitter? Just have to note that. Um, and number two, uh, pedo is not short for pedophile. It is pedo as in children. Um, pedo is a. It's a, it, it, if you look it up on yeah, Google, yeah, it, I know it, what the word means. Exactly defines to child. Um, so these are people who are grifting so, their children. How, how are they grifting um, their children, or are they childs? Their children who are grifting. No, not children who are grifting. <laughs> they're not, people they're are grifting on behalf grifting. of children. They're grifting on behalf of children, and she thought that the, correct the way to say that people who are grifting on All right, behalf. All right, pause of it. Pause it. Pause it. How does well, one grift on behalf of Let's children? go back to the original yeah. uh, tweet. Right. What does it mean to grift on behalf of children? Do we have that video? I think we may have figured out who's grifting on behalf of children. Uh, we did some research. This is, um, this is the guy. Project Veritas footage. This right. is, yeah, this is Project Veritas. We, we sent in a, someone to go and talk to a guy known as the Artful Dodger who apparently does some grifting on behalf of children. Play this. 
Sitting out among me more, hint him at lens is the artful dodge. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Dodger. Sure the old gentleman won't mind. All right. Yeah, there we go. All right, now we've got it. I'm glad. Man, that, I just why I'm trying to come up. I'm this glad Stefanik is finally. That's finally, a pedo grifter. Yeah, but <laughs> going after this crook. This grifter on behalf of children, again, in the original tweet, we're to believe, is supposed to come up with a plan to address baby formula. No, it's just, she's just <clears throat> targeting dance moms. It is a little bit more. I wonder you got to you go back and you uh, you go back and and check with all the babies. Like you're like you're reporting back to Boss Baby. We've got, we're going to, we're running the grift. I can't, it's a, let's keep playing the audio. This is absurd. How are they grifting uh, children or are they childs? They're children who are grifting? No, not children who are grifting. So Saying not, that people are grifting on behalf grifting. of children. They're grifting on behalf of children. And she thought that the, Correct. the way to say that people who are grifting on behalf of children, which who, I don't really understand how, who's, who's grifting? How, how is there a grift involved in any of this? Like what's what's the grift here? Well, I I, I really can't analyze it for you just because I, I haven't gotten a statement on it. Um, again, this is her personal Twitter account. Sure. I'm just giving you the definitions because we've received a lot of calls for clarification. That, I'm just kind of clarifying that what seems, that means. That's yeah. Um, how Elise Stefanik could be allowed onto a news program? where the interviewer doesn't start with like, I've got to ask you this because there's never been an actual explanation. Can you explain to me again, the grifting on behalf of children or what does she said now? Have they come out with a correction on this? Now they say it's, it was uh, talking about pedophile grifters, specifically the uh, guy with the Lincoln project that got into trouble. So now they're saying the Lincoln project. Okay, okay, that makes much more sense. Put Can up the original put, yeah, tweet the and let's 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 figure this out. We'll we'll substitute um, the White House, House Democrats, and that guy from the uh, Lincoln Project are so out of touch with the American people that rather than present any plan, the White House, House Democrats, and the guy from the Lincoln Project. Or the urgency to address the nationwide baby formula crisis, which is, of course, the job of the White House, House Dems, and the guy from the Lincoln Project. They doubled down on sending pallets of formula to the southern border, which, of course, the White House, the House Democrats, and the guy from the Lincoln Project did. They sent down those pallets. Is that what we're supposed to believe? Is that what we're supposed to believe? I mean, it seems like a bit of a stretch. Seems like she might just be smearing all of her political opponents as pedo grifters. Yes, that seems to be the more likely explanation. Yeah. Oh, wait. And that reminds me of the time that Tucker Carlson said just, you know, 25 minutes ago when we played that clip on this, that the idea of an elected official saying that they see Republicans as being a threat to democracy is the worst pronouncement we've ever heard by a politician rwanda all over again as opposed to calling them pedo grifters yeah. which incidentally should not be heard in a vacuum but rather as the animating the animating villains of the base of the republican party starting with pizzagate which took place five years ago through the entire QAnon. So this is not just like, you know. They tested that on the state level. They tested that with uh, uh, the, the uh, Michigan State Senator Mallory McMorrow. Um, that was uh, the state representative was fundraising, calling her, you know, a pedophile or pedophile uh, adjacent. A, a groomer. Right, yeah. a groomer. I mean, they've been doing this on the state level. And like, the you know, she wants a little bit of that. Uh, she wants to borrow a bit from it. And then she got called out. That's 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 what it is. Um, All right, we're gonna we're gonna take a break and head to the fun half. Uh, in in the fun half, we will talk about uh, actually talk about baby formula. Okay. Um, reminder: it's your support that makes this show possible. You can become a member by going to jointhemajorityreport.com. We are relying on our members for ninety 
8.7% of our uh, revenue these days, maybe 97.8. I get those two mixed up. Um, but uh, your support makes this show possible. Also, um, we're going to have the uh, live show and we're going to, we're going to give it to members first. Maybe the only way that you can consume it as a full show. Um, not sure yet. We, we're still in the midst of uh, high level negotiations with all the uh, pedo grifters <laughs> that we have to, uh, that, uh, that are in charge of this. Um, you mean the guy from the Lincoln The Project. ones that are working on behalf of children. The ones that are working on behalf of <laughs> right. children. The Artful Dodger. The Artful Dodger. I've got to go. I've got to contact him. I think he's probably passed away by now, that dude. It uh, could also be in reverse. Grifters who are grifting off children for their own p profiles, like Mama June. You don't know who that is. <laughs> Mama June? I don't know who that it's, is. It's uh, uh, Honey Boo Boo's mom. Oh, yeah. See, I'm pulling out the old um, reality TV references. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about the uh, live show. It was really uh, um, uh, fun as well. Uh, we still have more to talk about that. Um, Matt, what's happening on the the Matt Leckian Media Universe? Oh, yeah. Go check out the uh, think tank, patreon.com slash left reckoning. David and I did our uh, May think tank in which we talked about, uh, among other things, Stephen Crowder trying to own this uh, baby formula issue by saying it's all the problem of the government uh, regulating too much, causing monopolies. <laughs> well, I mean, it is, it is, it is it's arguably... It's capture. It is, it is a, a, a problem of the government regulating too much, saying we don't want bacteria that has already killed two babies in this country to go out. Um, but the monopoly part is actually what they should be working on, the government. Right, and uh, it's it's very interesting to see how these guys, they, we've talked about like the vibe shift. No longer can you just be free market libertarian anymore. Right. You have to say like, well, I, I'm against these big corporations too. Like I can't fully defend Abbott, but the government made them do this. Basically. Right, well, yeah. that seems to be a, a good formula. No yes, pun intended. Um, shooting up um, uh, people because they're black is wrong. But really, Joe Biden made them do it because they were talking about, you know, um, the, that, I don't know, college debt is held uh, by a lot of black people. I don't know exactly what it was. That the entire KBJ nomination in and of itself was Well, you know, you elect a, a black president, and then what do you expect? All right? You're really— uh, trying to do this special interest thing. Um, all right, should we, do we have Nomi? Let's let her in. Hello. Nomi! Hello. What's up? Uh, you Congratulations tell us about the on a great too. event. The oh, what? Thank you. The the map. Oh, the maps. Oh my gosh, so much news. Um, first off, who was the special guest at the the live show? You guys were teasing this out, and no one would tell me. I couldn't even find out. It was Al Franken. Oh, that's good. Damn. Yes. Damn. Yes. Your sister wouldn't even tell me. Like, I... Nope. <laughs> you, nope. You've run a tight operation, man. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> we had to keep it uh, way under wraps. My dad uh, my dad knew, but he says to me, because he, he went, and um, uh, there was... I had some other people, because, you know, well, Boston, I have a lot of people in the Boston area. He's like, I haven't told anybody. I'm like, good. Yeah, why would you? <laughs> That's awesome. They're not... I mean, supposedly they're coming to see me. Like, why? Pac-Man. Yeah. <laughs> That would have been oh, yeah. no, he told Pac Pac of course yeah. he did. He, my father calls up Pacman, sends him secret messages. <laughs> Sam just told me he's buying a new microphone. <laughs> They're going to go live Tuesday night for the uh, primaries, uh, Dave. I just thought you might uh, be helpful for you to know that. Yeah, they're going at 7. You might want to go at 6.30. Exactly. <laughs> really did healthy dad, relationship. Did Dad give Pacman the panel designs? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, exactly. I saw he gave them the physical panels. <laughs> My dad was like, hey, send me a picture of the what you're planning to do for your backdrop. And I'm like, why? And he goes, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Can you send it in a zip man. file, too, so that I can? Yeah, that's great. I just want to. And then he forwarded it on to Pacman. Yeah, that's the way it works. It's, it's David. No, me. What's happening on your show? CIA David is what I like to call him. Um, <laughs> what's happening on my show? So tomorrow, Wednesday, Wednesday.
Uh, we it's called Solidarity Wednesday. We have Ben Dixon on every week, and then I go on his show in the morning. And we talk about what it means to be a good ally and talking about different communities. Um, we also have Dr. Eric Osgood on to talk about long COVID. Uh, he's answering your questions. So if you have questions, uh, send them over to us at show at gmail.com. He not only is he answering the questions, I have a friend whose mother has long COVID. It was very serious. She went to so many different doctors, couldn't figure things out. It was, she had a, um, like early onset dementia as a result. And Dr. Osgood has helped her out oh, wow. drastically. So he knows what he's talking about. He's running this program with some other doctors, um, doing great work. And then we have Julia Doubleday on, uh, and we're going to talk about, uh, the Buffalo shootings, some electoral stuff, the maps, which is really, Oh, we'll get, let's get into that. Oh. Oh boy. Uh, in the fun half, no, me, I want it, to. Yeah, it's hear fun, guys. Thoughts. Real fun. No one yeah, knows well. who's going to represent them, what district you're in. If you thought you were safe in New York, the Republicans, even though they don't really exist, are still coming for you. So it's what the primary is now, August twenty third. Yep. So the pri well, two different. Okay. Remember before when we? Well, let's say this uh, for the fun yeah, half. Okay. Let's say this for the okay. fun half. Okay. You got to right, pay folks. for it, guys. Sorry. I thought that would be a simple answer, but it sounds like it's not. It's so. not. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's head into the fun half. We will take your IMs, maybe your calls. Oh, and just a reminder, if you're watching on YouTube and you want to watch live, the link will be in the uh, description. It should also just automatically fill your YouTube thing. If you're a member and you want to watch on your Roku, the way to do it is to go into your, uh, your YouTube app. Uh, or you know, to log in uh, uh, to the majority uh, .fm site, go onto your YouTube app and uh, click the link in the majority .fm post. Just get it on your YouTube app, and then it will populate in your uh, Roku history. In your history. All right. See you in the fun half. Three months from now, six months from now, nine months from now, and I don't think it's going to be the same as it looks like in six months from now, and I don't know if it's necessarily going to be better six months from now than it is three months from now, but I think around 18 months out, we're going to look back and go like, wow. What? What is that going on? It's nuts. Wait a second. Hold on. For, hold on for a second. Emma, welcome to the program. Hey. Matt! Yo. Fun hack. What is up, everyone? Fun hack. No me key. You did it! Fun hack. Let's Point go, there. Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Fun hack. Bradley, you want to say hello? Uh, sorry to disappoint everyone. I'm just a random guy. It's all the boys today. Fundamentally false. No, I'm sorry. Women. Stop talking oh, for wow. a second. Now let me finish. Where is this coming from, dude? But, dude, uh, you want to smoke this? Uh, Yes. Yes. Is this me? Is it me? It is you. Is this me? Hello, is this me? I think it is you. Who is you? Oh, no sound. Every single freaking day. What's on your mind? Sports. We can discuss free markets and we can discuss capitalism. Oh, I'm going to go throw up. Who libertarians? They're so stupid, though. Common sense says, of course. Gobbledygook. We fucking nailed him. So what's 79 plus 21? Challenge man. I'm positively quivering. I believe 96, I want to say. 857. 210. 35. 501. One half. 38. 9-11, for instance. $3,400. $1,900. dollars five four three trillion dollars Sold. It's a zero-sum game. Actually, you're making me think less. Of but, but let me say this. Poop. <laughs> you call it satire. Sam goes, it's satire. On top of it all, yeah. my favorite part about yeah. you is just like every day, all day, like yeah. everything you do. Without a doubt. Hey, buddy, we see you. <laughs> all right, folks, folks, folks. It's just the week being weeded out, obviously. Yeah, sun's out, guns out. I, I I don't know. But you should know. The, People the, just don't like to entertain ideas anymore. I have a question. Who cares? 
Um, Our chat is enabled, wow. folks. I love it. I do love that. Uh, uh, the, the, Look, um, gotta jump. You gotta be quick. I gotta jump. I'm losing it, bro. <laughs> um, Two o'clock. We're already late, and the guy's being a dick. So screw him. Um, um, sent to a gulag. Outrageous. Like, what is wrong with you? Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye bye. We have been, oh my gosh, where's uh, uh, Emma? Emma, she'll be there. In a I bit. told you. Oh my god! Oh my she's got god. cat shoes in her mouth. That was a quick break, guys. Jesus. I asked for fine. I'm bringing it back. I'm we're meeting. Gonna have, 